Hmm. I'm wondering, do I really want to put a jokey cold open in this video, considering its subject matter? I'm going to err on the side of caution and say no. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. So yeah, this is going to be a bit of an unusual video, uh, probably shorter than most videos, and it's going to be kind of just kind of a discussion video. Uh, it's very timely. It's kind of going to serve two purposes. Uh, we've had one very significant, notable loss in the world of music uh, lately, just last week, and then another one just yesterday, uh, but this is more uh, untimely. And so I wanted to not only recognize, you know, just recognize those two deaths in particular, but also the the uh, earlier one that happened last week um, provoked a question in me. And I was thinking about doing this video last week and just never got around to it. So yes, uh, just yesterday uh, we lost... Uh, it, was, it was a bit of a shock to me. I mean, yes, I have uh, one of his CDs. It's a compilation CD. Uh, Aaron Carter, his most requested hits. I, I don't know if he necessarily had any greatest hits, but anyway. Yes, Aaron Carter, uh, pop singer and younger brother to the Backstreet Boys, Nick Carter, passed away just yesterday, Saturday, at the age of 34. So yes, very, very shocking. Well, uh, an untimely death considering his age. I mean, 30s is way too young to go. Uh, but he had uh, he'd had battles with substance abuse in the past, and so the... Uh, cause of death has not been released yet, but I would not be surprised. I hate to be, you know, presumptuous that way, but, you know, drugs are a hard thing. Substance abuse is a hard thing to overcome. I, do, I don't have personal experience in that, but I know, I've known enough people who can vouch for that 100% that it is very difficult to overcome substance abuse. Uh, so he may have lost his battle with it that way. Possibly... Um, physical complications that arose from substance abuse. So who knows, maybe he was able to uh, stay clean until he passed away. But anyway, that's just speculation. But uh, yes, I just wanted to at least uh, recognize. And yes, uh, you know, f you, uh, roast me, if you will, for having an Aaron Carter CD. His stuff was catchy, I have to admit, you know, com total ear candy, Nothing, you know, substantial about it, but uh, I just kind of had... this. It's more of a uh, holdover from my younger, you know, much, much more pop-leaning uh, music listening days. I've just never, never gotten rid of that CD. So anyway, I guess uh, Godspeed, Aaron Carter. Uh, and that family just seems to have been cursed because uh, Aaron and Nick's uh, younger sister, Leslie, uh, back at the uh, beginning of 2012, died from a uh, drug overdo overdose. So it's just, you know, some, somehow Nick was able to overcome it. And I think he's been clean for many years now, and he's managed to stay clean. And, you know, major kudos to him for that, because as I said, I, I've heard from very re reliable sources, very close friends, how difficult it can be to kick a substance abuse habit. So, but uh, yeah, I can imagine what Nick is going through and uh, his, I'm not sure how many other siblings that family had, uh, but I mean, if it's just Nick himself shouldering all that grief, then, you know, God help him. Uh, my heart's with you, Nick. You're probably not seeing this video, but uh, my heart goes out to you and your uh, other siblings, if any, and your parents. Uh, so, yeah. Godspeed, Aaron Carter. Hopefully you'll find the peace in your, the afterlife that eluded you in life on Earth. So, But anyway... The other much more notable uh, music death, not to discount uh, Aaron Carter's death, but the much more notable, more significant death in the history of music was Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, he passed away uh, about a week ago at the age of 87. I can't remember what, how old he was, but uh, yeah, he had hung in there for a long, long time. I mean, you think about all those classic uh, rock pioneers, especially the, the, the bad boy ones, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis is probably the last one you would have thought to have would have lived to a ripe old age, honestly, really. Uh, so yeah, I mean, unquestionably, one of the pioneers of uh, of rock and roll's early days, and one of the p 
people who helped shape rock and roll into what it is today. And yeah, sorry for the color shifting. I think it just happens with uh, black and white images. I'll, maybe I'll, if I hold it further away from the camera, maybe I'll stop it. But uh, uh, yeah, so yes, his influence on rock and roll history, past and present, is unmistakable, undeniable. Uh, but as a person, you know, his, his uh, personal escapades are something else. Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, his most notorious episode with uh, regard to his personal life was the fact that at the age of 22, back in the 50s, he married his 13-year-old cousin. Yes, that is, uh, th that's wrong on several levels, obviously. Uh, so, you know, and something I am not okay with, no matter how consensual it may have been. You know, that's just, uh, it's, it's just not cool. And and it effectively tanked his music career. Uh, he, he basically went into hibernation professionally for many years and later on emerged as a country artist, uh, had a, me a measure of success as a country artist. But uh, yeah, and then that's that was kind of the subject I wanted to bring up with regard to this video is, uh, and it's happened before with art other artists, most notably Michael Jackson, is how do you separate, you know, or can you separate the art from the artist? Um, what should the line at which you do that be, if any? I mean, obviously these are all hypothetical questions. It's it's whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with as a listener. Um, and, and, and can you separate the art from the artist? Uh, I mean, me personally, I still have Michael Jackson albums. I still listen to Michael Jackson's music. And I am not getting rid of this CD, uh, nor the one that you saw in my uh, thrift store haul, the, um, the duets album that he did several years ago as one of his last albums. Um, just because the music is just so seminal, such a, an ingrained part of pop culture. Uh, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis's music and Michael Jackson's music. Uh, just you, you, you cannot. Uh, music is would not be what it is without either Michael Jackson or Jerry Lee Lewis, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it's. it's uh, I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this discussion. Where I, you know, it's just kind of more of a thing for me to get it off my chest. Uh, but yeah, it's you know the the marrying a underage person who's also your cousin. You know, that those are multiple things I'm not okay with. Uh, but you know, and and uh, I hope you guys are okay with uh, you know, and and you don't think any less of me for wanting to uh, hold on to the CDs and albums and continue listening to music. Not only do I have Michael Jackson's uh, '80s albums on CD, I also have them, some of them on vinyl. Uh, I've picked those up in just the last year or so. Uh, drink break. But to end, uh, <clears throat> another one who's uh, kind of raised some ex uh, very significant eyebrows just very recently in the last few weeks is uh, Kanye West. And I have the luxury, I guess, of not even being a Kanye West, West fan to begin with. I don't have any of his albums. I don't think I've ever listened to any of his music. Maybe I have, but... Uh, it made that much of an impression on me that I don't remember whether I listened to it or not. So, uh, but yes, his anti-Semitic rhetoric and other outrageous stuff that he's said and done is just, you know, in my opinion, kind of inexcusable. And in a way, it's, you know, when, when somebody just outright says things that are ridiculously prejudiced against a group of people that is, you know just complete lies and prejudice against another group of people. That stuff, to me, is inexcusable. I don't think I would be able to uh, to like an artist anymore, you know, if they held those kinds of, of beliefs. And, yeah, I'm struggling to think. I don't think I have any artists in my collection uh, that, you know, who have those extreme crazy beliefs. Uh, if I did, I would have gotten rid of them by now. Um, unless, you know, there could be somebody in my library that I don't know of has these views, you know, um, racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, um, misogynistic, you know, just, I, I, that stuff doesn't fly with me. And especially if you 
come right out and say that kind of stuff brazenly on social media. You know, I mean, I uh, I suppose I, I've heard, and I don't know if it's uh, true or if it's, you know, unsubstantiated, that um, uh, Kanye West has bipolar disorder. And so, you know, it could be that or some other form of mental illness that's making him say these things. Does he really believe them? Does he not? I don't know. He's said them enough times that I... It's a safe bet that he does believe them. Um, you know, unless he just says them when he lapses back into these, uh, you know, manic or depressive episodes. I, I don't know. I, I'm not a psychologist. I don't pretend to be one. I'm not even an armchair psychologist. Uh, but I do know that bipolar disorder, if he has it, is is something that is, um, is not good. Uh, needs treatment. Uh, there's a good person... You know, nine times out of ten, there's a good person buried inside there that, who is just, you know, it's just that their brain is misfiring. Um, if if they have bipolar disorder or something, it's like, you know, they may say or do things that they, you know, being of sound mind, wouldn't. So, but I don't know. That's just, as I said, that's, that's speculation. You know, nobody knows what's happening inside Kanye West's uh, precious little head than Kanye West basically. So, uh, but yes, Kanye is, is not and never will be in my music library. Uh, but I gotta say Jerry Lee Lewis and Michael Jackson will be. Um, so yes, I guess in, in a way it's, this is kind of weird for me to say, and I hope, I hope you still respect me as a person when I do say it, but it's in a way it's the kinds of transgressions that they do that, uh, you know, that determine whether or not I'm going to hold on to these artists. And it's also, you know, the veracity of things, because, you know, Michael Jackson's misdeeds, you know, they've never been proven. Although, you know, I am I'm, I'm tend to believe them that there has, there have been enough people who've come forward and described very, very similar things that, you know, it's pretty hard to believe that the accusations against Michael Jackson were not true. I mean, it's just there, there too many dots connect, if you will, on that scenario. And, you know, and Jerry Lee Lewis, he paid the price for his, uh, his questionable morals back then uh, by, you know, tanking his music career. So in a way, he's paid his penance and it's a non-issue, I guess, in that way. You know, not to say that, you know, Again, I will say, I am not okay with the fact that he married his cousin, uh, consensual or not, an underage cousin. You know, that's, uh, yeah, don't like that. But uh, but when Great Balls of Fire or, um, oh, what's the other song? A whole lot of shaking going on, uh, start playing, I get into it. You know, and same thing with Bad or um, Thriller or... You know, the other dozens of Michael Jackson hits that he's had, that he had over the years. You know, the, the music, the music outweighs the, uh, the bad stuff by the artist. Uh, at least when it comes to Michael Jackson and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, in my opinion. And uh, so, yes, in the end, really, it's just, you know, it's up to you. You know, do you feel okay you know, continuing to listen to these artists and uh, and at least acknowledging their place in music history. That's up to you. Excuse me. A uh, little backfiring here. Um, but yeah, that's basically, I think I've said all I've wanted to say about this. Uh, hopefully you didn't uh, turn off the video and uh, you're, you're still sticking with me up through the bitter end of this video. Like I said, I don't I didn't, don't know what I was hoping to accomplish with this video other than to just kind of, you know, lay out my thoughts uh, to anyone who might listen. So anyway, yes, let me, I'll, I'll cut off the awkwardness uh, while I still can. That'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Uh, if you did, if you found it worthwhile, let's put it that way, uh, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms, uh, yeah, your thoughts especially on this subject, down in the comments below. Uh, also scroll down to the description 
for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.